The world is facing a shortage of polysilicon. It's the material used to make solar panels. Currently, 45% of the global supply is produced in Xinjiang in China, but the area is under scrutiny for its dubious human rights policies. Joining us now from London is Bloomberg Green's Sharon Chen. Sharon, thanks so much for, for joining us on this. The biggest driver for, for keeping production in Xinjiang is, is that it's cheaper, but polysilicon prices have soared in the past six months. So will that make it easier to produce polysilicon looking more ethically? Um, well, I mean, that's kind of the problem with this issue. It's kind of a really tricky one, right? Because so much of the polysilicon, like you said, about 45% is um, produced in Xinjiang. And the reason it's sort of um, become dominant there is because there's a lot of cheap coal power there that's used to refine um, the sand that is turned into the silicon and then turned into wafers and cells and then solar panels. Um, but it's also a place where there are a lot of concerns about human rights and about the possibility that, you know, the forced labor program could have spread to these polysilicon factories. So just because um, solar manufacturers are raising these concerns, it's not so easy for them to take their supply chains out of Xinjiang to begin with. Um, so it, it's not necessarily the case that um, just because this has been raised as an issue, it will become easier to procure elsewhere. Is this, I mean, is this something that, that's, that's widely known uh, about the raw material that actually goes into solar? Because it's, 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 I mean, it's very ironic that so much coal-produced power goes into producing something that is needed in something that, that helps reduce our reliance on fossil fuels, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's very well known at all. Um, it is very, um, you know, it, it is um, kind of a dirty secret, I guess you would say, about um, these polis these um, solar panels that, you know, really tracing their supply chains are becoming an, a bigger and bigger issue for companies and also for investors um, that are really get, getting a lot of returns from investing in solar power right now as we pivot more and more to clean energy, but really drilling down about um, what kind of emissions are produced in that process and what are the conditions in the factories that produce these. I mean, these are all um, factors that investors and companies should be taking into consideration, but you know, it's both challenging to figure out the situation in Xinjiang, for example, where the government doesn't allow independent auditing of its factories, and then also, <clears throat> you know, switching to lower emission or zero emission production of these green um, energy products, not just solar panels, but also wind turbines. You know, all of that takes new technologies and it takes investment and it could all possibly raise the price of uh, these products. So is there, is there a widespread movement within the clean energy industry, within the solar power energy industry, to actually uh, move out of this region? Well, um, 175 companies around the world, including some Chinese solar companies, did sign a pledge from the Solar Energy Industries Association, um, which says that they want to move their supply chains um, to ensure their supply chains don't have forced labor in them. And in a separate release also mentioned that they want to move out of the territory, out of Xinjiang. But, you know, just signing a pledge is one thing, and actually doing it would require a massive overhaul of the entire solar global supply chain. They would have to source the polysilicon elsewhere, and they would also, you know, it's not just about polysilicon produced in Xinjiang, but that polysilicon goes into um, other factories in other parts of China that moves to Southeast Asia, where the U.S. imports a lot of um, assembled or, uh, you know, solar panels that are just one step away from fully assembled come from there. And so if they were to genuinely um, trace these um, supply chains, you know, it, it it would take a long time to actually extricate themselves from that. Area. Bloomberg Green's Sharon Chen. Sharon, thanks so much for, for taking the time and for joining us on Quick Take this, this morning. We appreciate it.